Gopala person who is an IRSE, Indian Railway Service of Engineers officer and a gold medalist engineer from IIT Kanpur, MTech and IIT Roorkee, B. Ed. She, um, Kumar Keshav, with the, his vast experience of implementing Lucknow and Kanpur Metro in record time, is now leading the DBRRTS operations. India team for efficient and cost-effective operations and maintenance of India's first delhi ghaziabad Meerut RRTS corridor. Previously, as a Director of Projects and Planning at Delhi Metro Rail Corporation, DMRC, he had been credited with successful completion and commissioning of various important corridors in Delhi Metro. He held the prestige of the nation high during the 11th Commonwealth Games 2010 when he commissioned Central Secretariat Badapur Metro project on 3rd October 2010. Just on the day of the start of the Commonwealth Games, when approximately 70,000 people travelled by Delhi Metro to reach the main venue of global sporting extravaganza, the Jawal Nal Nehru Stadium. Truly a remarkable person to call. He is Shri Kumar Keshav, Chief Executive Officer, DBRRTS Operations, India Private Limited. Please put your hands together as he makes his way towards the stage. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I will be speaking today on outsourcing of operation and maintenance. This is a topic which is very close to my heart. I will try to justify why it is to be outsourced and what are the advantages. Uh, uh, with my background in Delhi Metro and Lucknow and Uttar Pradesh and Kanpur, uh, I've seen metros operating themselves as the, their systems. But um, NCRTC is the first corridor uh, of Delhi Merit RRTS which has been outsourced to DB operations for operation and maintenance for 12 years period. Very briefly an overview, we all are aware, um, whole transport sector is uh, seeing a remarkable growth with all types of uh, policy changes like new Metro Policy 2017 which came, PPP model, enhanced project funding, the urban transport sector is among the seven engines of growth of the Prime Minister's Gati Shakti mission. Uh, there is a continued push to provide mass rapid transit system or bus connectivity in over 50 cities inside in the country at the moment. That's what the plan is. And to achieve this, government has planned huge investments under the National Infrastructure Pipeline projects. So this is the scenario of metro systems in India at the moment. Uh, there are more than 850 kilometers of operational metros in nearly 19 or 18 stations, maybe not very precise. But additional about 1,000 kilometers are under constructions in various stages, including planning. And uh, rapid, uh, regional rapid transit system, RRTS, is also one of the projects in that. New modes of transit systems are emerging as potential and viable options for tier two and tier three systems, uh, cities also, like LRT, somebody is talking about a new metro also. The state of art modern technologies like contactless ticketing, advanced signaling systems, unattended train operations, building management systems, modern rolling stocks are being adopted by these metro companies to be at par with the world standards. And also for ease of commuting national common mobility card concept of my predecessor was also talking about the mobility as a service. All these things are getting importance. So operation and maintenance of technically complex metro systems is very costly. And in a life cycle of a project, nearly operation maintenance cost is about 60% of the total project cost. So basically 40% is the capex and operation and maintenance over a period of 30 years is nearly 60% of the cost. So to remain financially sustainable, metro companies need to actively look for optimizing operation and maintenance costs, along with their increase of fare box and non fare box revenue, but reduction in operation and maintenance cost or economy is a very, very crucial feature. So in line with the metro policy, uh, regarding engagement of some private participation, even in operation and maintenance. 
National Capital Regional Transport Corporation for their first corridor of Delhi Merit RRTS awarded a contract to Daushivan International Operations. And as an outcome of that, DB RRTS Operations India Private Limited, which I am heading at the moment, has been established for operating company for this project. And first 17 kilometer of this priority uh, corridor of this section, we are going to start very shortly, hopefully in the coming month itself. Now I come straight to why outsourcing of O&M, which I uh, briefly touched in the beginning also. Importance of efficient operation and maintenance is a crucial role in the metro and railway industry for many reasons. Cost efficiency is one issue. Long-term sustainability is also an issue because there are many technological upgradation, small, small required. Safety and security of the system has to be paramount. Reliability and punctuality has to be ensured. And obviously, there is a great customer satisfaction which brings more and more number of people to the commuting system. So metro or railway operator has the obligation to prioritize these requirements by implementing a right balance between these objectives for a high quality service, for efficient and sustainable operation and maintenance of these systems. These are very, very important. So there are many challenges in operation and maintenance which are being faced by the metro systems. Cost efficient and effective operation and maintenance of metro system is highly technical and complex. This we all have to understand because we all know from the industry these are highly technically and complex projects, metro projects. So operation and maintenance is also a very costly and efficient process. So this complex operational requirements include operational efficiency and enhancing the capacity, efficient asset management system, customer experience and service quality, which an operator has to bring on board, engagement of the skilled staff, like trainer, operation, or the maintenance staff, imparting proper training, their competency certifications for a long-term operation and maintenance. I already discussed about safety and security of the system. Technology integration, because many of the technologies which we are implementing today will need some change, some modification over the period of time because these are long-term operation and maintenance costs. And the stakeholder engagement, which is obviously the client, the people, the governments, the all uh, people who are using the metro and getting benefited out of it. And financially viability. So there are benefits of outsourcing and operation and maintenance. As I mentioned previously, Metro Policy 2007 itself recommends that there should be a public-private participation in implementation of these projects, which can be including outsourcing of operation and maintenance. Emphasis is on operational efficiency in terms of technology, procedure, cost by bringing in technical expertise and efficiency of private sector into the operation and maintenance. An experienced operator can bring in best-in-class global experience, access to specialized expertise, technology and knowledge transfer for better practices, enhanced operational efficiency and performance, enhanced service levels, flexibility and scalability in operation and maintenance in place of a rigid system and very routine way of maintenance, sustainability and inclusivity, and cost effectiveness, which is an important feature in operation maintenance. As I said, 60% is the cost of operation and maintenance in the life cycle of a project. So with outsourcing, strategic considerations are clearly spelt out when we do an outsourcing of operation and maintenance. So, as in the case of NCRTC, there are clearly defined objectives and a scope of outsourcing, which when we do in-house, probably we are not able to take out that clearly. 
establishing robust contractual agreements with the defined performance KPIs for the operation and maintenance, service quality and performance definition, risk assessment and management, this is also by operator. Performance management and reporting is a very specialized way of in a very uh, management uh, function which has to be implemented and uh, monitored. Flexibility and adaptability and the stakeholder management requirements and of course cost efficiency. So all these things are strategic considerations while outsourcing of operation and maintenance can be clearly spelt out. So for optimum benefits, operator, that is our suggestion, should be brought in right from the design stage of the project itself so that all the requirements of the operators can be properly built in over the period of time when operation and maintenance is done. It is a cost effective and right method. Now I come, what is Daushaban International Operations? We are a company which is the largest transport and mobility providers in the world. We are number one railway operator in the Europe. Nearly 320,000 employees with DB. DB is, all, is in all types of rail transport, from passenger transport, means high speed and long distance, regional, metros, LRTs, trams, buses even, even London, the red buses, many of the buses are being operated by the DB company. Similarly, in freight, operate, we, freight operations, we are in rail freight, we are in land transport, we are in ocean transport, we have got our, um, what is that called? Uh, DB uh, Cargo is a company which is, uh, DB Shankar, which is a cargo management company, that is also by DB. And then rail infrastructure management, not only railway tracks, stations, energy, supporting services, station management. So railway, DB is in all types of operation and maintenance of the railway systems. With more than 187 years of mobility experience, DB is global player with deep technological and digital competence. And DB International Operations provide operation and maintenance of all rail, uh, rail segments, as I mentioned above, even beyond the Europe. And now we are probably in four countries outside the Europe where DB has entered into. India is one of them. Very briefly about uh, this, you must have already seen or people may be aware. From DB International Operations, a company has been formed as DB RRTS Operations for operation of Delhi Merit RRTS Corridor. Uh, uh, this company uh, uh, contract is for 12 years period and extendable by another further five years period. Contract was awarded in May 2022, but final agreement was signed in July 2022. Appointed days after all the condition precedents were met. Now, what is the scope of DB uh, operation and maintenance in RRTS project? So what you see in the gray, it is written DB's scope. We are operating operations of RRTS trains and there are MRTS trains also in Meerut area. Those will also be operated by us. Operational control center, asset security, manning of ticketing counters, fare collection. This is all part of DB scope of work. All fixed assets means track, tunnels, stations, systems, cleaning, housekeeping. These are also DB's scope. And we also have non fare box opportunities like parking management and non fare box license spaces. Few things are beyond our scope. Uh, one is the rolling stock maintenance. Rolling stock maintenance is by Elstrom, who are the service for, uh, uh, system supplier. And uh, uh, trains will be handed over in the morning to us and we will be operating the trains. Civil infrastructure like viaduct and tunnels, those are being maintained by NCRTC themselves. And the third thing is the automatic fare collection system, which is also maintenance is outsourced, although fare collection is by us. So uh, very briefly, quickly, I will take forward that what we have done since July when we have come, uh, the, don't go in figures too many. Let me just briefly explain to you. Uh, in, uh, if you see 27th of uh, second milestone, if I say 27th of February 2023, all the 214 
as I said, an international operator will bring all the expertise for operation and maintenance. We have developed our own standard operating procedures, manuals, instructions, and they all got approved from NCRTC. Now, thereafter, insurances and other things are in progress. And uh, I will show later on also that an AMS system very well we have developed and implemented. It is already rolled out. So, a team of about 312 people were fully mobilized, which were trained, and, and all their competency certifications are also nearly done. And uh, this is in six months' time, which we mobilized an entire team. And uh, as I said, uh, this successful completion of induction and training of all these uh, staff has been completed. So these are the OEM trainees which we are giving. These are all DB's team. More than 20 different operating uh, uh, OEMs are there. Original equipment manufacturers, they have provided their trainings on the systems. All 100 uh, maintenance staff, they have taken the training. And most of them have now been certified as professionally, professional competence has been given to them by the OEMs and NCRTC and by us. Similarly, about 70 operation staff have also pro, uh, participated in these trainings. Then, once the initial competency on the job training was started after provisional competency by us of the, after training, so you can see the DB team is working in all the places from tentative maintenance to derailment to operational control center and trade evacuation also. So here are our train operators. This is a complete train simulator has been provided where our train operators have been trained. More than 40 kilometers on test track we have completed, more than 400 kilometers on main line we have completed, and trains even during the trials are now being operated by the DB's train operators. So OE, uh, operation and maintenance team is fully mobilized. That's how the total final competency certificate has been issued. A competency procedure has been spelled out. And uh, if I say more than 90 or 94, to be precise, are the maintenance staff which have all been issued competency. And operation team is also fully competency provided. As I mentioned earlier, there was an asset management system which we have brought from. Requirements were defined. And all the asset registers are now being populated. These are some photographs of how we have prepared ourselves with the entire maintenance activity. That's how the assets are to be taken over by operator. This is all very, uh, that is the advantage of bringing an operator and maintainer. Because now assets are properly being taken over. We are making the punch list, we will test everything, then only we will take it over. So there are nearly 245 assets are to be taken over. They are being jointly inspected and assets are being taken over progressively. We have performed nearly 20 days operational readiness tests for the systems before starting the service trials. And uh, 80 different tests have been con conducted, fully documented. And in the present stage, we are with the service trial, or we call it empty trial runs. We are different scenarios of about 81 to 83 different scenarios have to be done, including from degraded mode to normal mode. Then only an operator will be fully taking over. That's what I was telling. These are the requirements an operator and maintainer has to take over. So towards end, I will say, at DVRRTS, we have been able to recruit and train extensively a fully competent operational and management team in a record time for undertaking operations of Delhi Bay at RRTS. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, sir, sir. sir. Thank you very much, sir, for uh, such a nice presentation on the operation aspect. Uh, my question pertains to the maintenance of track. What is included in your scope and what is excluded in track? Uh, uh, maintenance of track is fully included in our scope. Okay. So, uh, in case in, uh, say, any rail is skidded for a long uh, stretch, so whether it's renewal is in is your scope uh, in that... No. Uh, uh, what, what has been specified to take care of such eventualities, NCRTC has said, okay, such event eventualities, if, they ha if it happens, so rails, they will provide, like turnouts, they are costly equipments. So certain numbers of equipments they have specified, this we will give it to you, in case such thing happens. Hopefully it will not happen. And uh, similarly for traction, because as you rightly said, these are some of the equipments which are, uh, because of, suppose, uh, wheel rail interaction, something happens, and trains are not in our control. Although we will take over everything every, very properly, and analysis can be done, but still to take care of such eventualities, very clearly spelled out provisions are there in the contract. Thank you, sir. Well, uh, we will not take over the replacement of the rails, of course. Yeah.
Hi, I just have one question. My name is Alok and I work at IIT Delhi. Right? You mentioned in your presentation that NFR is actually included in your contract. NFR, non-fair box revenue. Yes, yes, right. So, I'm, you know, we are actually helping some of the metro systems design a digital real estate architecture wherein NFR is being designed, where they're trying to monetize it from various senses. So, are you actually open for us to eventually come and pitch it to you and say that, you know, we will actually help you monetize the entire corridor infrastructure, both from a private sector perspective? No, no. Uh, <laughs> you will certainly be welcome when we take it over. <laughs> but the fact is that um, stations are, have been designed by NCRTC and uh, more from the functional perspective or the requirements for the metro operation or the RRTS operation. But of course, non-fear box revenue is a very important feature for financial viability, cost effectiveness repeatedly I am saying. So they have identified this area, they have rather constructed additional areas which are for fear box. And uh, those areas gradually we are working together how those will be transferred to us and how we will take over the non-fear box revenue. And model is that once we uh, get the non-fear box, in a certain ratio, it will be shared with the NCRTC, and trust will be with us. Definitely, I'll come back with you on that. Thank sure, you sure. so much. Thank you. Thank you. Sir, I have one question, sir. Excuse me, sir. I am J.K. Bhatti, AGM Rights. Sir, in one of the slides, you have rightly said, for optimum benefits involving the operation right from the beginning of a project during design and construction phase is the right strategy. My question is how it is possible, sir, because in most of the metro projects, we are doing design and build contracts. Fine. And we are doing design and build contracts. And operation and maintenance comes afterwards. Then how this strategy can be followed? No, no, that's what I'm suggesting that you should do. Because I've also done metros for 20 years, but we have not done that. Uh, the fact is that you, if you bring an operator in the beginning, Many of the requirements which probably you are over providing may not be required. Or some of the things which can be provided to or make it operationally more viable or easy probably are missed out. So this is my background where I say operator should be brought as early as possible from the design stages. It is not that it doesn't happen. If I am right, people are here from Hyderabad Metro. Keolis was involved from the planning stage itself. They were their operators. But NCRTC, we have come at a later stage. When project has been done, now we are coming. So what I'm trying to say, had we come earlier, probably we, have we would have contributed in total planning and design also optimally. Which is a model which, is, which already happened in Hyderabad. Sir, I am Satpreet Singh from Delhi Metro. Uh, I want to ask, uh, is obsolescence management of systems uh, you are going to maintain in NCRT? NCRTC, is it part of DB Rail or uh, obsolescence management is uh, on part of NCRTC? And uh, if it is part of DB Rail, how are you planning to deal with it in long term? Uh, for some of the system, but particularly obsolescence has become very important for the particularly systems like signaling or telecom. To be true, uh, for the 17 years, 12 years plus 5 years extendable period, this management will have to be done by DB. And uh, as a result, now we are working out for, uh, I'm not a signaling engineer, but for the later parts of the one more complicated, like we call L3, L4 level of maintenance and all that. We are trying to talk to the OEMs, can, how they will support. But this is our scope of work. For 17 years, we will have to manage these things. But that is an issue whether you do it uh, through an outsource operation and maintenance company or whether you do it yourself. That is always a challenge. Thank you, everyone. Please put your hands together. Thank you so much, sir, for being here.